Uh, hello to everyone, and uh, I'd like to continue our fantastic session of uh, interviews with the most brightest experts and professionals across the globe. And here I'd like to introduce two icons of uh, design from totally different sides of the world. Uh, Konstantin Gorski, uh, who is in the past was a design director of uh, Yandex Junt uh, in Russia and now has a fantastic opportunity to lead uh, design agenda in Intercom, international company. And also we have uh, Doug Powell, uh, first ever vice president of design in IBM with a plenty of professional experience from the US. Am I right, gentlemen? Okay. Yes, nice to, nice to see you all. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, if you don't mind, uh, I will go straight forward to uh, questions because those questions have been got from our audience, uh, from the market, and these are less uh, from me, they are more from people, uh, from professional society. Yeah. And let me address the first point uh, to Costa. Maybe it's uh, quite unusual, but Costa, design and IBM, what is for you any parallels, any associations? Well, if you ask me personally, speaking about my experience, uh, I was very lucky to be at O'Reilly Design Conference in 2017 in San Francisco, and Doug was speaking there on stage presenting IBM's design system. And I remember this talk, I was sitting in one of the first rows, uh, so that would be my genuine first association with IBM. Oh, wow, it's outstanding. So, so, we've, so yeah. we've met before, so we've met before, huh? Yeah, we even were in the same room. I think we haven't talked at the conference, but we were in the same room at least for a brief period of time. Uh, Doug, as far as I remember, uh, design was in the core of IBM uh, business for, I wouldn't say for centuries, but at least for decades. Uh, and even this famous yeah. slogan, good design is a good business, uh, came from uh, uh, IBM. Uh, from yeah. uh, one of our presidents, but uh, do you see any change in the market that people really start to perceive for uh, IBM as a company which not just know what good design mean, but really can educate uh, companies and people around? What's your feeling? Well, you're you're right uh, that um, back in the middle of the 20th century, so you know. 40, 50 years ago, uh, IBM was one of the leading companies in, uh, in using design. You referenced the good design is good business statement from Thomas Watson Jr., who was the leader of the company, the CEO of the company at that time. And, you know, that was another era. That was a different era. And, uh, and, and design was very important to IBM at that time. There were some very powerful and, and, and important designers who, who were working with the company at that time. Since then, you know, the, the, the world has changed. The world has changed dramatically, uh, you know, in the, in the, in the time between uh, that era and, uh, and our current time. I think of uh, 2007 as a, a very sort of pivotal pivotal year in the history of, of design. Uh, that was the year that iPhone was introduced by Steve Jobs. And that was a, a, a very important moment for the history of um, digital experiences. Uh, and, and everything really changed after that. And businesses of all kinds um, in all industries uh, began to think differently about how they are creating uh, creating experiences for their customers, whether it's retail experiences or uh, banks that are creating, you know, experiences around managing your your finances, or healthcare companies creating, you know, an experience with the with the medical system. Every every industry was was suddenly thinking differently about about that because of the the way that the iPhone uh, you know uh, created this this great experience and IBM began to uh, began to think differently at that time also in 2012 then when Ginny Rometty uh, became our CEO. She really made a, a, a major commitment to invest in design as one of the ways that IBM would 
transform and become uh, a leading company. Uh, and so it was 2012 uh, that that was that was really a, a, a an important year for for IBM. Uh, and then, uh, as Kostya uh, mentioned, in in 20 uh, in, in the years leading up to 2017, we were building a program, we were building a practice, we were adding designers to our company. And in 2017, as he mentioned at that O'Reilly conference. We were introducing our way of design, uh, our approach to design and design thinking to, you know, to the industry at that time. Um, so there were a lot of, there was a whole sequence of events there uh, that, that really set the stage for IBM kind of, you know, using design in the way that we are now. That, that's great. That, uh, after the moment of uh, heavy and quite massive investment uh, in IBM, we already experienced uh, eight years of significant transformation that I believe somehow visible, not only inside, but also outside. But you touched a very interesting point. Uh, one of our most recent papers, uh, Designing a New Frontier, declares that design maturity is different from industry to industry. I think it's uh, quite obvious to many, but in your opinion, is there like a special design for uh, each industry, like special design for retail, special design for banking, special design for oil and gas? What's your point of view on it? Well, I have two answers to that. <laughs> there, there is definitely an expertise that we as designers must have when we are working with these very complex industries. As you mentioned, oil and gas, very, you know, very detailed, complex, you know, material that we need to understand. Healthcare, the same thing. Finances, you know, yeah. we need to understand the language, the the um, the practices of those of those industries in order to be uh, to to be relevant. At the same time, the concern of the designer is the is the is the user, the human, right? And in each of those cases, the job of the designer is to find that person and to understand them as clearly as they can and to bring that understanding back to their team and to create an experience for that person that makes their life better. That's so. So, uh, well, so yes, it's different and it's the same. Let me uh, a little bit uh, expand the question. Yes, you mentioned that design. In any case, finally, it's all about human being. Uh, but human beings, they are different, and uh, it's also interesting. Uh, for example, from a geo country perspective, is there any uh, like real difference or approach uh, to the design? And Kosta, I think uh, you have uh, own professional experience working in Moscow, London, Dublin, San Francisco. Is it the same everywhere or you feel that for the specific human beings, for the specific audience, uh, design itself should be different? There are definitely different cultural, uh, cultural aspects and differences. What I'm noticing now actually is that design become more and more a global thing. Like one example, if you just uh, open Pinterest and search for, let's say, coffee shop interiors, and then you, you've got all these beautiful hipster coffee shops and try to guess where the pictures were taken from. It's impossible. Like it can be anywhere, literally, from London to Singapore to any tiny village uh, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, they're all the same. And that to me speaks that maybe they are like, you can call it universal trends or fashion or whatever it is. Uh, there are definitely things that are happening at the global scale where people would like or prefer like similar approaches and similar designs. Having said that, of course there are some geographical differences. And I, again, like yeah, experienced firsthand when I moved from Russia to Ireland that the FinTech and in Russia surprisingly was way more, uh, uh, way more advanced. And mm -hmm. when I was trying to open a bank account in Ireland, I was, to be honest, like pretty, pretty much shocked at how immature the bank, the banking industry was and how old these institutions were, how um, their apps was less user friendly than I got like uh, almost a table stakes experience in Russia is going to be. 
Yeah, of course, uh, it's a little bit a uh, tricky point, is it similar or not, but uh, I think uh, the tendency is quite obvious again to everyone and you perfectly describe it. And honestly, I think that's uh, one of the reasons why at a certain moment, maybe not only in 2012, but a little bit earlier across the market, someone later on, uh, large enterprises, they started to think seriously about design, about customer experience. They've been so much inspired uh, somewhere fintech, somewhere startup culture, Amazon experience. But what we see as IX, uh, who have been advised, uh, created to advise clients how to infuse it into the enterprise, that immediately people, especially top management, they started to struggle how to combine, how to combine creativity, freedom of thinking uh, together with the scale of enterprise, because it's clear how to create a nice product being like a team of 10, 15 people maximum working in a nice space, have a one product, one audience, uh, be very focused. And when you see an enterprise with all these processes, all the controls, how, in your experience, uh, how to properly combine, not to lose from one side creativity and freedom, and at the same time to keep it under a certain control because otherwise at enterprise scale it may become a nightmare and disaster. Doc, what, what's your yeah. experience here? What's your advice, feelings? Well, the key to that, you're absolutely right. I mean, the, when you, when you, uh, you know, we're, we're at IBM, all of the problems that we're solving, all of the products that we're building and products and services that we're building are very complex. And um, so, you know, the, the important thing is how that designer and design team uh, is relating to the experts in other parts of the business mm -hmm. that, uh, that they need to solve that problem, to solve that level of complexity. So getting a designer to relate to um, the, their partners in other parts of the business who have different expertise and different ways of thinking, uh, different ways of solving problems, that's, that's very important. And that, that, that relationship and that trust between that designer and their counterparts and other disciplines is, uh, is super, super important. That's where, you know, what we call design thinking or enterprise design thinking in our language, um, other, you know, other, other companies call it different things, human centered design, but that's, that's where that practice becomes so important because it's all about mm -hmm. the, the connection and the co-creation of those different experts coming together around a problem and solving it together. So that's how we approach it. You know, we really focus on that, that, that trust level and that, um, you know, relationship. Mm -hmm. Because then what's your experience, how to bring and make successful uh, design at scale? I believe both, uh, both companies, which we mentioned it, uh, Yandex and Intercom, can be considered as a, a scaled company. It's not just a little startup. Well, I don't know. Intercom is not that gigantic, so uh, definitely not at an enterprise level. Uh, so I, I would treat us as a small product company still, or a small okay. Asia. Okay, let's be cautious. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think I, I totally agree with what Doug said. It's all about the problem and connection between people in the first place. Uh, and I think it's about connection to your customers and making mm -hmm. sure that the whole company can speak to the customers or have even ideally the first hand direct experience of talking to customers. Obviously, it's much more difficult at scale. But sometimes, like for example, if you do a user testing, maybe you can invite engineers to sit there and watch. Mm -hmm. uh, at least if they're not participating, so they can again experience it and see how customers are interacting with the product. So I think it, it, it's about that uh, culture of being closer to the customer, a culture of understanding, like building empathy for the customer, mm -hmm. understanding what is happening there, and then that scales across the company. Mm -hmm. But Again, maybe a little bit provocative point to you, but uh, it sounds like design becomes uh, a kind of commodity profession uh, because uh, you just mentioned it, it's everywhere. 
in marketing, you need to have designers. In business, you need to have designers. In IT, you also need to have designers. Whatever industry is, uh, design should be everywhere. What, what's your view? Maybe not on a profession. I, I believe everyone realizes that in every profession you can uh, reach a master degree or you can be like, uh, like everyone around. But where is the place in the enterprise of design competence? Should be distributed, centralized? Should it be in marketing, in business? Or maybe there should be created a completely new org unit design of everything in the company? How do you see it? Well, for me, it's uh, about where, I mean, each company is going to have a different answer to that question. Where should it be placed? How should it be organized? We've done it a certain way at IBM. We've distributed our, for the most part, distributed our designers across the company uh, and globally. That, that was the, the choice that we made for, for good reasons, I think. Other companies will make other choices. You, you mentioned earlier um, design maturity or the maturity of the design organization you're building. I think that's more important than mm -hmm. the way that it, it's organized. How serious are the, the, is the level of practice that that design teams are engaged in? What is their access to leadership, to the business leaders uh, the, who are investing in design? what is the influence that they're really having on the business um, all of those things are what take design from as you say uh, commodity to a highly valued um, strategic skill mm -hmm. so that's why we're we're paying a lot of attention to that at ibm and we've got teams all across the company and so we've got maturity different maturity levels in different parts of the company. That's, that's very important for us. When we can get all, uh, as many of those teams as possible up to a higher level of maturity, then uh, we, we know that the investment in design is being, is being paid off. So actually it sounds like uh, there is no silver bullet, yeah? Uh, for everyone, one unique structure, which can be easily applied and then uh, full happiness would be achieved. <laughs> I haven't found it. <laughs> it seems uh, Konstantin is uh, fully aligned with you. But uh, another point uh, comes also from uh, our audience is uh, a kind of fear that there is a certain boundary, a certain edge between professional area and leadership, meaning that you are like vice, like you are vice president uh, level in this company. And at the same time, you are a distinguished designer. Do you see that there is a, a certain barrier point uh, after which uh, like really people should, I wouldn't say stop, but they may simply not have time to, um, spent on like creativity to create really something from a professional standpoint of view because leadership area track record is quite challenging is there such a uh, point or not is it possible to combine growth in professional area with growth in leadership track yeah that's a, that's a, a great question and and you know, as you naturally, as you advance in your career, Kostya, I'm sure you're, you're, you've experienced this too. You get, your day gets more full with things that are not about doing design. And that's, that, that naturally happens. In, at IBM, we have a, a career framework for, uh, for designers to, sort of map their, their career path. And at a certain point that that path splits, that leadership point uh, that, you're, that you're talking about, Evgeny, uh, where as a, as a senior designer, um, you are choosing between, you know, being a maker, um, a, a, a practitioner of design, or being a leader and manager and, um, and more on the business side. So there's a, there's a point there where designers have, a, have the opportunity to make a, make a mm -hmm. choice one, one side or the other. Mm -hmm. And 
Kostya, have you already made your choice on this four? Well, I don't know. In your case, is it like uh, very uh, clear and straightforward uh, ladder or line? What do you think? Uh, yeah, I definitely had. I made a choice towards the management track because we also, like, similarly at Intercom, we have a career framework w w that splits. Uh, and I would just love to add a couple of points or maybe more like a couple of reactions to what Doug said. First, uh, both uh, tracks, uh, like, you can still grow and become a pretty influential and have a great impact in the company in both tracks. You don't necessarily need to become a manager or a leader to have impact. You can do that as an IC and you have, I don't know, principal level of designers and they um, oversee strategic programs across different products, uh, like across the company. They got invited to the meetings with the leadership where important things are discussed. So they, they have the same level of influence as like uh, pretty senior managers uh, or directors. And the other point is that we actually encourage people to try and even move between the two tracks. So mm. once you hit this fork in the road, it's not uh, like forever, like you're not forever stuck on one path. You can start to try to become a manager, see how it goes for yourself. Are you happy in this role? And switch back to an IC track, uh, like an individual contributor track, if you're not happy as a manager and vice versa. And people do this, like they, they do this, they, they switch between the tracks and grow. So I think it's a never ending journey of uh, learning about yourself and uh, what you want to do. Yeah, just uh, don't yeah. be in a circle. Better to be in a spiral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ideally it's good here to have some progression, I agree. <laughs> from, at least from time to time. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's cool. Uh, and another observation which comes at uh, design now becomes uh, really uh, very automated. So we have like plenty of tools, fantastic tools. Uh, we really don't see any boundaries. Uh, there are communities, people exchange thoughts, ideas. Uh, AI now starting to step in into your professional area. Uh, and it's really, at least for common uh, citizenship, it's now hard to distinguish the difference between uh, design created by a machine or design created by a human being. What's the next? What's your point of view? What we should expect in the next five, 10 years? Not tomorrow, but the day after tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I, think, uh, I think we're going to see uh, you know, whole new areas of practice. AI is, is one. Um, and there's lots of you know, permutations of that, lots of layers to that. That's not one thing. It's not just designing chatbots, but it's, it's designing these whole new systems. You think of something like, uh, well, we're doing it. We're doing a lot of a lot of work with um, with IoT. So you know, how is AI showing up not just on our phones, uh, or but in in the world that we're, you know, the physical world that we're living in. I think of, of quantum computing as a whole next generation of computing that, you know, I don't know a lot about it. I, maybe you guys do, um, but there's a whole way of, of interacting, like how are, how are humans going to interact with, with quantum computing? I don't, I don't know. Um, that's, that's a very open space. Blockchain is a, is, is a, a, a big, a big area for IBM uh, because it's a big area for industries like financial services and shipping um, uh, and and healthcare. So uh, and government services uh, as as well, public sector. So yeah, so um, lots lots of new stuff uh, around the around the next corner. Quantum blockchain, uh, actually all around technology, which is really hard to understand what kind of impact it will make on ourselves and future. But definitely, your point is definitely this impact will be, and it will change everything. Question, what do you think personally about uh, the next gen of design? What is it, how it might like? Yeah, uh, I'd say I'm not as close to technological trends, so it's a bit more difficult for me to talk about it. No, uh, this is we know a lot about technology. Maybe there are completely different spaces which we do not touch. Yeah, I'll say like purely from a consumer perspective or just from more down-to-earth perspective, one 
change that obviously we all are seeing and that the world overnight switched to remote. Like we were just talking with Doc um, a few minutes ago that our company had to switch to remote overnight and we did not expect this. Uh, and may, like some people said that it just uh, sped up trends that already existed. Like it could have taken the next 20 years or so for people to switch to this and we just were forced to do the switch immediately. I think it's interesting to think how this can change and transform the society and in some areas like cities, for example. Are people even need to live in cities anymore? Or can we all go, or like some of us go to more remote locations? How is this going to transform education industry? Like are there going to be schools in the traditional understanding or healthcare technology or governments? Mm -hmm. Uh, how is this going to impact, I don't know, delivery services or maybe media services, the way we spend our free time? Are we all going to just uh, watch Netflix or is there going to be something else? Like, there are different, different trends and yeah, I think it's just an interesting topic to discuss and try, and to, try to brainstorm even what, what possibilities or how the world can be different if we're all distributed and remote. No, you are so right. Uh, it's, it's really interesting how in just uh, two, three months, the concept of uh, work from home has been converted into work from anywhere with uh, like to not just changing the world, but totally changing uh, the way of behavior. Uh, with, like every world is for you. You can work from any point, uh, just do what you need to do and nobody should care about it. Uh, oh, it's really interesting. And maybe a last point, um, maybe a little bit more formal, but uh, at least uh, Forrester uh, stated that uh, design might be very impactful on business, uh, growing revenue, uh, at least like up to three times, uh, growing and, uh, or shortening, better to say, time to market. In your experience, like real stories, real cases, uh, uh, what you might uh, say about real impact when business uh, change the business dramatically change uh, in a good sense of course yeah that uh, well you talk about this this report by Forrester research that came out a couple of years ago uh, that analyzed our, our practice of design and design thinking and and attempted to kind of place value on that on that practice the the key thing that they found was that teams that were were um, again mature design teams uh, were able to move faster. So it was really about speed and agility that was the, the most important thing. They were able to get from the idea, uh, the insight about the user to a product or service in the market, you know, twice as fast as, as otherwise. And we see that. I'm sure you've both seen that. When a team is really, really just, you know, really in the in the zone then they moving fast and, and that's the objective and that's the that's the key for us when we can get our teams moving faster then design then, then that's where we see the uh, the return on investment for design mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. clear and of course as far as i remember uh you drastically changed uh, uh one of the yandex products uh yandex browser any uh, other stories, any uh, other experiences, maybe with Intercom, how designers really change business agenda, uh, like traditional business parameters? Yeah, I mean, I think it happens all the time. Like even the iPhone example that Doug uh, mentioned at the very start was probably yeah, the canonical example of design uh, transforming yeah. our whole understanding. So, uh, I think I was just lucky to work at companies where design is valued and was at the center of everything that was happening. So it was very difficult for me to bring this as an example of design transformation because it kind of was natural progression and it was natural for the products that I uh, had the pleasure to of working on uh, to be started by design and to be yeah, led by design. Mm. I think just maybe one, one reaction that I have to your question is that uh, when I think about companies who are maybe less lucky or less mature at the current stage, uh, my first reaction is that it's interesting to think how traditional companies uh, could think about themselves as technology companies. Mm -hmm. 
And it's like, regardless of whether, like which industry you're in, even if you're, I don't know, farming and you're growing vegetables, it's very hard to not think of yourself as an internet company these days. So you obviously need to connect your vegetables to the internet and you need to put different sensors and track the progress and I know have some automation around how it goes. Otherwise it's very hard to compete in the modern world. So maybe that's one example of how, uh, and then yeah, if you are a technology company, should you have designers at your company? Of course you should, like uh, think about what, what would like, I don't know, companies like IBM do in this case, or Google or Apple, Facebook, whatever they are, they all have designers, they all invest in it, and that's what you should do as well. Cool, uh, I think it's a fantastic, uh, not a final, but at least a standpoint to our conversation, and I really thank you for all your time. We just addressed a couple of points, but uh, at the same time highlighted 10 more, uh, most probably for uh, next conversation, not necessarily to be a formal uh, one, but I'm very pleased uh, with this opportunity to have this conversation with really, really uh, two uh, serious professionals uh, with different experiences. So thanks a lot. And I believe that it was very uh, helpful and useful for our audience. Doug, Costa, thanks Great. a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Katya. It was great to speak to you. Thanks for the invitation. It was great. Great discussion. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Great. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Great to talk to you both. Thank you. <laughs> yeah.